right. Um, so, um, resolved. The house believes that every child in the MENA region should have a better future. This is the motion we're going to discuss today. And we'll talk about the argument at the end for a speech. Hello, everyone. My name is Basil. I'm an advocate for free freedom of expression in Gaza Strip, Palestine. But before we talk about DDD, I'll tell you a bit about myself. I'm a I'm a person who's always in a search of fascination, creativity, and let's say trying new things. Uh, some people call it adventurous, some people, like my mom, call it sometimes stupid. <laughs> However, it's trying new stuff, meeting new people. And I've been a sensitive, a kind of extro extrovert who feels lonely when he's alone in one room. So usually, I'm always with people, talking to people, listening to people. And it's one of the most pleasures that I enjoy ever, is being in a room talking with other people. When I was 14, I went to the States as an exchange student. I went to Harrisburg, Oregon. Who goes to Oregon? I did work to Oregon. <laughs> Harrisburg had 3,000 people, three main attractions for myself. First of all, my host family house, a very warm host family that, way, that hosted me took care of me, fed me their food, took me to their church, and took me on trips. Second one, the river. And every, anyone who knows me knows the river and how much I value this place. The first time that I was alone in one place for six hours, thinking and reflecting about things in my life, in my community, and doing comparisons between my community in Harrisburg and my community in Gaza. The third place, which I'm going to talk to you about, is the speech and debate class. The place that I learned first how to do speech, to argue, to actually have a good conversation with someone about a disagreement without end up finding with, with the other person. And that was the kickoff. When I went back to Gaza, I started a small club with my friend Heba and other people who wanted to learn and debate. First of all, it was a small activity that we wanted to have fun, passion, argue, and actually work on our skills. But we end up teaching and mentoring hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, and more to come. One of our programs we're going to talk about is DDD, which actually goes for critical thinking, public speaking, research skills, communication skills, speech writing, and formation. But most importantly, what we were teaching is not only debate or argument or discussion. We were giving a hope for a place where a lot of youth has lost hope, not only in living a good life, but having a good conversation with their parents, with their friends about disagreements. They became so afraid to think outside of the wall. This is a picture of a wall, a apartheid wall in Palestine. This between Israelis and Palestinians, and sometimes between Palestinians and Palestinians in Palestine. This wall is a materialistic uh, stone wall that actually can divide two places. But there is a bigger wall that has been implanted, and with the help of Palestinians, conflicts, Israelis, and many, many other powers, which is loss of hope. The one, the stage of your life where you're 20, <laughs> You think about how to feed yourself. You don't think about accepting anyone else. You don't think about your future. You don't think about the person you love. You only lower your expectations till you want to live in a conflict area. And this is not just Gaza or Palestine. This is every conflicted area around the world. What we felt while debating each other on a very small club with 20 people was fun, passion, good time, and a very, very heated amount of information exchanged between each other. But what we actually felt after a couple years of training is that each of us have become the person that he wants to and is becoming the person who is want to. He's not afraid to think or express himself in Gaza, whether it's online, whether it's between his peers or his family. He's not afraid to defy anyone in his understanding and sake for his fight, for whether it's freedom, his salary, his life, his, the love of his life, or other, other, other information. 
And I would love to give a small example of the type of journey that we've been to. This is a small story of the females of Deir al Balah, a little bit of um, one of our programs was DDD in Palestine. We did, um, along with, we won a grant from the US consulate to implement trainings. Rather than bringing people to us to the club, we went to the schools. I went to the places where no one actually goes to because it's a kind of far next to the borders and the people are very conservative that they don't allow anyone to talk to with their daughters. So we knocked every door of the families, 50 families. We convinced the father and the mother that your daughter and your son come, come with us to the training session. We'll, he'll have fun. He'll learn more English. We can assure that he's going to become a better person. And if you don't, pull him out in two weeks. We grouped all the parents. We told them about debate. We told them about skills. Some were supportive. Some were very, very defying and denying. But eventually, they were very proud the moment that their children sat and made the debate in front of them in both an English and Arabic language. Two months before we did that, none of them had the courage to stand up and talk about anything, except <coughs> politics in a very negative way. The way that everyone talks about, with no understanding, no basis of evidence, nothing. They stood up and they talked about social and political problems, economic problems in Gaza. The guys in the pictures are from 13 to 15 years old. And they're already leading a great life in Gaza. Along with this project, we were involved in a couple other ones. We were the first founders of TED Talks in Gaza under the talk of TEDx Shijaiya, where we brought the ruins of the Shijaiya destroyed city to the hall, shaped it as a TED Talk, and told people about hope from Shijaiya, not from anywhere else. All the team in here have worked hard to send a message to the world that it's true that we understand hope and we always talk about it and everyone who goes to the TV talks about it in a very cliche way. No, this is a very good sample that people can make something very, very, very painful in their memories into something very beautiful. We also did International Day, Women's Day debates. We included so many people in our society. We had the goal of including people everywhere inclusive society rather than an exclusive one that you basically exclude someone who you don't believe in. We did a couple programs with university students and we aim to empower their skills to the shock after you graduate from a PA. Where's my job? What I'm gonna do in life? Gaza is so small, there's so many problems, what should I be doing? They were learning English, critical thinking, as it was the most important topic and other other ones. And there is a picture here which is gone. But, <laughs> but we were very blessed with the participants we had. We started by 20, and then we opened a small door for people to join. We had 500 applications, and then we opened a better door for enjoyment after a year. A thousand people applied, and then NGO started calling us, please come give a training in critical thinking to my employees for the next month. NGO started connecting with companies, people are started talking, until an article came out, people in Gaza are creating a culture for their own. Now, it's not as sweet as it sounds. There is always obstacles in the way of that. But the most important thing, at the end of the day, is the participant who feels that in two weeks he had went on a journey from being a normal person to a different person. We don't change these people, we told them you can change, you can, but if you want you, we can help you. We are not responsible for your change. You're responsible for yourself, for your uh, freedom of expression. You have the rights that you have to fight for, and no one's going to fight it or give it to you if you don't take it. So that was one of our models. Joining hands and spreading this small culture is what we actually advocate for at our stage. We wanted to include more people we wanted to increase the culture, not only of debate, dialogue, and discussion as a healthy intellectual sport of everyone, but as a hope for everyone that I can defy anyone, but with my mentality, intellectual abilities, not by my loud voice, my extreme actions, and whatever, whatever has been happening around the world and the MENA region.
So I'm calling to action, sharing the books and materials we combined, talking and giving the experience we had, listening to each and a few reactions to restart and re-include the concept of hope in a very smart way in our work. It's true that when you take someone and tell him about leadership, there is thousands of leadership courses in, in the Middle East. But when you include hope in leadership, responsibility, and change, this is where leadership becomes more practical and people start leading, not only following. Inshallah, from our argument and my evidence and my call to action, we will have a better future for us and for the children of the MENA. I hope my argument was enough to deliver the first of my debate. And I would love, love to talk to each and every one of you about my experience and listen, especially the debaters who have been conducting a lot and a lot of debates in the MENA region. You guys are changing not only people, you're changing yourself and people. I'm very honored to be here. Thank you for listening. That's it. Let me see hands, hands, hands. Question, please.